Hi everyone, Narelle here. Today I wanted to um, show you a different type of base page and I've shown you once before using the patterned paper and we've cut it into different sizes, um, different layouts and created just base pages. So I'll have the videos for those linked below. But today I thought I'd make some base pages using Project Life cards or Stamp Out Memories and More cards. Now I have this massive tub of these cards. Like, I don't know if you can see this, but look at this tub. Absolutely chockers with these type of cards. I've got the 6x4 cards all here. Wait, I've separated some. So all the 6x4 cards I've never used. And then all the 4x3 cards, and that's a double layer for them. So that is absolutely massive, and it weighs a ton. And there's more 3x4 cards here at the front, and some down the side. So I have this absolute massive tub of these cards, and I thought, well, I need to start using them. So I thought, well, I can make base pages using them. They work just like patterned paper. Let me, oh my gosh, move that aside. That is so heavy. Right, so I went through all that big tub and I came up with some layouts and all you have to remember is how much of a gap you want between your cards. So because they're 6x4, 3x4, 3x4, they would, if you left them that size, they'd take up all the cardstock. So, like if I put two 6x4s next to each other, then that's a whole 12 inches. But I like to have a little bit of a gap around them. So, I probably took off a quarter of an inch, maybe each side of the card, so that I had this um, white border in between. Now, you'll see some of them don't line up exactly, and that's my pretty poor effort at gluing things straight and neat and tidy. But... I'm going to have photos on here, so it doesn't really matter if they're not all straight and they're not all lined up, because I'm going to have photos and embellishments. So you treat these cards like you would pattern of paper. And just because I have a sentiment or a saying here, doesn't mean that has to be shown when I finish my layout. I could have a photo over there, or I could build an embellishment cluster over that. So it didn't worry me that I had one, two, three, four large word pieces on here because they're not all going to be shown. And I'll make sure when I use this page that I cover up a few of these. So I'll probably use leave this one and some of these, maybe these two, I'll cover up with photos and embellishments. So, um, and this one is sideways. It didn't worry me that it's sideways because I have an intention to cover that and all I want to see is the patterned paper behind it so if I grab I'll just grab this card as an example and if I put a photo here see my photo can sit like this and all I see is the pattern there and I don't see the words so um, I didn't worry if things were sideways because I can always cover them up and also when you're using a page like this don't think because I've got this nice um, piece here I'm going to use it as my photo mat so my photo has to be here and just a little bit smaller than the mat so I can see that around it. You don't have to put your photos there. Your photos can be um, like portrait here and portrait there. Uh, you can have a, um, what are they called? Landscape here and a landscape there or however you want to arrange it. Don't look at this as a grid in that you have to place your photos in these places or these places. Just look at it as patterned paper. All right, so hopefully that is making sense and I'm actually portraying what I'm wanting to. If you have any questions at all, then just leave a comment below and I'll try and answer it. Uh, uh, and also, if you have anything that goes along with these, um, like sometimes you'll buy a, a kit and it'll have stickers in it or other embellishments in it, Keep try and keep them together. So I've got this sticker sheet that has some gold elements on it and a few words. So I'm purposely going to keep that with this page so that when I go to actually use this base page to make a, make a layout, 
that I have these stickers already here. So it's a good starting point. I might not use them, but same with this one. I had all these stickers left over from this pack. This was a making um, Memories and More pack from Stampin' Up. And I had all these left over. Now it doesn't mean I'm going to use them, but they coordinate. So it's a good starting point for my embellishments when I do the layout. Now this one I made a double page. So I have like that. And again, I've put the gap in between. I like the borders in between. And this one, I can um, use the bit off to the sides as well. Like hard to see a double page in the camera, but you get the you get the gist of it. Um, I can add a border down here. I can do a, a punch, a border punch, or washi tape, or ribbon, or lace, or something down the edges. Um, I can even if I have a plain coloured cardstock, I can pick that pink or another the yellow or whatever and put strips of cardstock down here as well. So I don't have to leave them white. I was just focusing on using the little cards that are sitting in my tub unloved and untouched for years um, and I just wanted to make layouts with them or base pages with them. So this you might think is very bright and very bold and there's lots of things that don't match but when you cover some of this up with photos and embellishments then you're not going to see all of these flowers and these flowers and oh gosh that's a lot of colour and a lot of different patterns you're not going to see that um, okay so that's another one I did oh that's just a sheet and then I'll keep the embellishments with that one here's another one so lovely um, aqua green what is it teal and yellow so I just picked out ones that sort of went together um, and it didn't really matter how much pattern and different pattern I had because like I said a lot of it's going to be covered up so with this one it's a different layout so you'll see the first one I don't know if I can go back to it hang on okay so with these you also have flexibility of how you lay them out. So with this one, I've done the three six by fours down the side and then all three by fours on the side. Then the next one, oops, if I can get it back. The next, the double layout, I pretty much stuck to three by fours with two six by fours on the side. So you don't have to have all six by fours or all three by fours. You can mix it up. You just got to make sure that um, you don't have an odd sort of pocket where something looks doesn't fit or looks a bit strange. So with this one I've used three six by fours and then filled in with the three by fours. So I couldn't exactly put um, I don't know how to explain it, but I, when I was sorting it out, I had one that I went well. I've got four or I had three of the three by fours or something in it, <clears throat> and it was just really odd. And I couldn't get it to look even. I had this sort of gap. So you might have to um, play around with your placements until you get them right. But don't get stuck on this is where a photo goes and that's where a photo goes. So with this one, this lends itself as a perfect place for a heading. This is perfect for journaling. But I've got other ones here that are gridded and lined as well that I can use for journaling. Um, just because they have the grids and lines on them, I don't have to use them for journaling. This would be beautiful as a title, and so would this. But it doesn't mean I have to use them as a title. I could cover them up with something else and put my title down here. And with this one, I could put something else over here and then build on this little cluster, and that could be an embellishment in itself. So I hope, I hope that's making sense. Um, okay, here's another one. <clears throat> Sorry. That's like the first one I did with the three six by fours and the, the six small ones. And even though this has Feeling Festive on it, um, I probably won't use this as a Christmas layout because all my Christmas photos are red and green, basically. We don't have a blue Christmas because it's not the colours I go for. So I will cover that up. I could put something across the middle there and just use the flowers um, and have a title or a word or even put my journaling there. This one is sideways. The text is sideways doesn't matter I'm just going to cover it 
and the bits that you'll see, it'll just look like a pattern. No one's going to sit there and go, oh, that's sideways. Not if they do, go, fine, you're not looking at it anymore. And then again, last one, three um, six by fours and the three by fours on the side. So I just went for like um, coordinating colours, but you don't have to do that. So what I thought I'd do today as well is actually show you ones that I've made up um, and, and actually glue a few down and then dive into my box, grab a bundle of cards and try and make some layouts and make those cards work. All right. So this is the first one that I've just picked out and I just put together things that I thought went together. So I have this beautiful flowers. I love this card. This one I picked because it's got the same colour pink as there. That has the blue in it. That's got the same colour pink. This has the blue in it and that's got the blue in it as well. I think I went this way. Okay. So that's upside down. No, I don't think it matters. It's an all over pattern. So let's just glue this down and I'll show you how quick and easy it is to make one of these base pages. And I will be back with another video that will actually, will use a few base pages. So we'll actually make layouts out of base pages. Because it's very easy to make the pages. You just cut the paper, stick it down or get the card, stick it down. But some people will struggle on how do I then use it. Um, but it's really quite easy. So these are going to cover the entire width of the paper just about the cardstock because these are six by four pieces I can leave them like that or I can trim them down if I trim them down I have to then re-round the corners so I'm not going to do that I'm going to leave them like they are I'm trying to work out my colors here let's put that one there and that one there no that's too this is the hardest part I don't want to have these two together I can't pick them up because there's too much the same color but I have the blue there so if I move this one no matter where I put this one it is going to be still blue next to blue and I really can't help that but I think I want this over here because that gives me um, room for an embellishment cluster there I possibly want one, no, I can't do that either. Hang on a minute. Oh, this is the hard part. I may want to use that as, um, oh, I can put that there. I was going to say I may use that as a journaling block, which means I don't want that possibly to be covered, but it doesn't have to be, does it? All right, so now I just have to make sure these are all on the page. And I'm pretty sure it's going to cover just about. Right, so the tip, my main tip when gluing things down, if you're not a measuring type like me, I don't measure, I just stick. So with these ones, I know there's going to be an ever so slight gap out either side. So I'm going to glue the first one down. And I'm going to leave the tiniest, tiniest gap on the side but I'm going to buff it up to the top. All right, so that first one's down. I'm just gonna glue the second one down. And this liquid glue is fantastic. I used to use tape all the time, um, but then if you don't get it straight with tape, if you don't rip it up straight away, then you tear things. And as I'm getting older, I just find I can't get things as straight anymore so right so now my next tip is start from the bottom so that if there's a gap in between these like if I was to put a that butted up there okay and then butt this one up if you hope you can see that I've got a big gap down the bottom now I don't know if you can see that I'll move it up all right so now I've got a big gap down the bottom I want to try and get an even gap everywhere so I'm going to, wait a minute, I just paused. Let me just see, someone may be trying to call me. No, hopefully not, we'll see. All right, so now I'm gonna glue this one down on the the, um, the bottom here. 
and I'm going to butt it up to the bottom leave that tiny little gap on the side hopefully I'm eyeballing it and the gap is the same okay so I'm stuck down now all right so then now for this one I can try and get that gap in between here and here even so I'll do this one next and then the ones on the right hand side are just a mirror copy placement of these ones so again the small gap on the side and then also trying to leave an even gap between this one and this one and this one and this one and you'll see that gap there so now these ones on the right hand side are basically just the same oh, i've already glued that one down oh i have two <laughs> all right <clears throat> then this one down the bottom so now i know this butts up to the one on the left and hopefully i have a little gap on the side and then this one I now have the placement of all the other ones around it and should be right there we go so there's our first one now what a fantastic way to use these cards from these packs I cannot stand the pocket scrapbooking style um, I used to use it, like your project life or your memory more, um, the actual page protectors that are divided and have the little pockets. I find, no matter how careful I am with the albums, things always go skew if, or they start to come out the top of the pockets, or the pockets where you go in from the side, they come out the side, and it just drives me insane. People have said, uh, put your washi tape between and stop them coming out. I go, well, if I have to put washi tape in between everything, it wrecks the look of the page, and it just... It, like I go through so much washi tape so this way um, I'm still using the cards and I can still get the look of a pocket page by gluing them down onto cardstock so even though I'm going to use these as base pages and put photos over things and embellishments over things I can also use them as if they are a pocket page so on each and every card I can actually do a little scene put a little photo put some embellishment put some journaling and actually create a pocket page effect but using the cards glued onto cardstock nothing's going to move nothing's going to come off they're not going to fall out of pockets you still get the same look if that's the look that you like um, but just ditch the pocket protectors because they're a pain anyway that's my personal opinion you may think differently about it um, but yeah I just I'm not a fan and rather than get rid of all these cards because I don't use the pocket system anymore I thought no I can still use them it's only patterned paper you can look at it as six by four pieces of patterned paper that's all they are all right so there we go another one so I have also got this one which is very bright and colorful oops um, okay here we go so with this one they are all vertical now you can look at this one <clears throat> and go well no the love heart sideways down here but I'm going to use this just as color on the page okay now okay so these ones are nice and bright really really simple and I'm just using white as my base um, purely because it's easy it goes with everything if you wanted to use other colors you most certainly could so with this one i'm just going to arrange them in a pleasing design now i don't want the yellow and the yellow there so i'm going to move that across this one with the flowers i can put wherever i like because um i want them up the top do i want them up the top no i'm going to put them down the bottom down there that up there yeah I think that's okay all right so again you'll go oh well that doesn't go you've got 
umbrellas and clouds and flowers and love hearts and it just doesn't blend and normally um, when I'd be putting pattern papers together I would agree I'd go no they're not quite right but with these ones I'm trying to think outside the square I guess and use them up and I'm sure in the end um, that they'll look fine because you're going to add embellishments and photos and if I get to a page and I go, I really hate that panel on that page, maybe I don't like this in the end, I just get another piece of 6x4 cardstock and put it on top. So I could put a white piece on here or a, a green piece or something. If I don't like the panel, I can cover it. Nothing's going to stop me from doing that. So just another way of using what you have. So I'm on a spending freeze, sort of. <laughs> So it's like, well, I'm going to use what I've got and not fall into the trap of having the latest and greatest that everyone has. And there's so many new releases coming out in the scrapbook world and it's like, I can't afford to buy all them. So I'm going to be happy with what I've got. Like I used to, man, I seem to be talking a lot. I used to, every Friday, um, I think it was a Friday, I'd get paid, not every Friday, was it? Maybe. Or was it when I got... No, I think it was once a month when my pay went in. I used to get paid monthly. And guarantee the next day after I got paid, I would be at the scrapbook store. No, actually it was weekly. It was weekly. Every Friday because they used to... Was that Thursday or Friday? I don't know now. But anyway. Um, the local scrapbook store used to release their new products on one day of the week. They put them out on this one particular day. So you could guarantee that on that day, on my lunch break, that's where I'd be. I'd head to the scrapbook store and I'd have to buy all the latest and greatest that had just been released. Did I need it? No. Some of it, it wasn't even stuff I knew I would use. It was a theme that I wouldn't have a use for. Um, at that time I had no pets. So, you know, if a pet line came out and it was really cute, a dog or a cat line, oh, okay, that's really cute, I like that. Should I have any pets? No. So why was I buying it? It's because it was the latest thing out and I just had to have it. And I could back then. I was, you know, working full time in a good job. Hubby was in a good job and it was like, yeah, I've got the money, why not spend it? And you know, I still have a lot of that paper <coughs> in my stash. So yeah, I didn't need it. But I've joined a group as well called Bash Your Scrap. Bash Your Stash. That's hard to say. Bash Your Stash. Oh, okay. There we go. There's another one. Now you'll notice on this one, I obviously was talking too much and I didn't get things lined up properly because my gap here is bigger than my gap here. But also, these are from different manufacturers. So, I know this is stamping up. This is not. This is someone else. So, possibly the cards are different sizes. And that is why I have um, the different <coughs> different gaps. But anyway, it, it goes. Now, what was I saying? I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> saying something. Oh, that I still have a lot of those cards. Oh, cards, no. Sorry. A lot of those papers in my stash still. Unbelievable. I know. And that's when my daughter was um, a baby. So she's uh, about to turn 18. Can you believe that? Oi, oi, oi. Right, so for this one, I don't know what I was doing because how do I do? I think I was going to do the three. I was going to treat this one. That's what I was going to do. Okay, like you would a um, base page where you just have your, uh, what am I trying to say? What's it called? It's got a, it's got a name. Um, Happy Horizontal is what Janet calls it from RTS. So I'll just use that too. Happy Horizontal is where you put a piece of 6x6, six six, no, a piece of 6x12 paper across your um, cardstock and that's the base page ready to go. So I'm going to treat these three the same. And I can either find another piece of pattern paper in my stash to go down here, put washi tape or something across the middle, 
um, or I could just put photos and embellishments down here and just leave those as acting as the paper. So that's what I'm going to do with these ones. So I love this sander here, it's so cute. Now I know these are from Stampin' Up. I love this range. From a few years ago now, absolutely beautiful. Just love it. All right, so this is another design, or oh, another idea, I guess, a layout idea. And because I don't have anything else at the bottom of this page, I can purposely leave a little bit of a gap at the top. And I really like that glitter one. So I'm going to put that one last in case it overlaps. Um, in case it needs to overlap. So this one I've buttered right up to the side. Hopefully that gap's the same. So that's perfect for journaling. That deer centre. So like I must have cards in that box, that tub to do hundreds of layouts. Seriously, I have so many. Okay, so there's there's that one. How simple and easy is that? Now I haven't glued everything down properly because I might tuck things as I go along um, and make these pages. Oh, I'm going to have glitter everywhere now. Um, yeah, so I really love that one. That's really cool. Okay, we'll do a few more and then um, we will dig into the box and grab a few cards out. Let me find something else. Got another center ones. What have we got? Oh, I just threw them in the water. <laughs> I don't know. What is that there? Oh, it's our stickers. Okay. Again, here we go. Three um, center type ones. So I'm going to use this as a panel on half the page. How easy is that? So, like, you know, oh, quick and easy. I love these. And if you don't have many Christmas embellishments, then you probably don't need to add too much to this, these layouts anyway, because you've got center and, and things. So you don't need to have themed embellishments, is what I'm trying to say. You could have just red and green cardstock, cut some shapes, cut some banners, um, you know. And they're your embellishments to go with your photos. This one's perfect for journaling. That's why I'm putting that down this corner. And then Merry Christmas in the middle. So also, if you have multiples of a card, like this one, for example, it's the same as that one, just the reverse side, and you don't have embellishments, you can cut the things out of the cards. So I could cut around, if I had another one of these cards, and I didn't want to use the other side, which I'm, I'm sure there's more than this in the packet, you can cut around this to use as an embellishment on another page. So you don't have to use the cards as cards either. You can use them as embellishments. All right, so there's another one. Quick and easy. One more, because I like this, these Christmas ones. They're so cute. And then we'll grab some cards out and put some together. Oh, look. Cute. Oh, here we go. Look at this. How easy are these? Oh my gosh, there's my heading already done. Snowflakes and the snowmen. Love it. These are perfect um, as well. If you go on retreats and you don't know what you want to pack, what you want to do, you can't pack everything in your craft room, then make up some base pages before you go. Take your photos, uh, take some things for embellishments, and make it easy on yourself. I remember when I used to go to retreats, it used to take me like a week to pack. What do I want to take? Oh, I don't know. I don't want to take all those things and all these things. And then I'd try, well, okay, I'll make up my own kits, basically, like a, a um, kit up some photos with papers and embellishments and stuff. And then I'd go, oh, but... I, but then I might want to use this and I might want to use that. And I used to go in multiple bags. It was like, oh, unbelievable. I'm sure I'm not the only person. There we go. There's another simple one ready to go. All right. Let's uh, pull out some cards. And I'm going to pick a bundle of the smaller cards. And I'm just going to put them in piles because I don't know what goes with what or if they're even in order. So here we go. 
Right, let's start with this first pile. Oops, okay, that's a square one. That's not going to work. I'm going to quickly flip through and on the reverse side. So already I can see I like that. And I'm just going to try and get some things that I think goes, no, that was the one I wanted. Okay, but I also had that, we'll go with it. Now because this is your uh, your smaller ones, we get a bit of cardstock so we know how many we need. You need more obviously of the smaller ones than the big ones. So just grab a piece of cardstock and start building as you go. So then you know what else do I have? Here we go. That goes in for new. Alright, so I can fit four by three. So I want more. That will go. That actually will go as well. So it gives you an idea of what you need on your page. You don't have to have um, lots of different designs. You could have just a few if you wanted to keep it more uniform. But it's the same colours and then maybe that one. Is that enough? No, that's not enough. So I'm going a bit crazy here with having all different patterns. But you definitely don't have to. Now these were just luckily in order, like these must be all matching, um, what am I trying to say, not sweet, no, what are they, collection or something, whatever they call them. Oh, I need one more. I don't know if I want that spotty one. Here we go, here's one that's a bit more. That one or that one? Maybe this one. I got the same there, it doesn't matter. And there we go. So there's another page. How simple was that? And I just flicked through the cards and thought, well, okay, they all go together. So now I will clip them all together. I won't glue them on now because you know, you know, it's only just gluing. You just put them in a pleasing arrangement for what pleases you. So there's another bundle. Alright, so I've used them. Let's go on to something else. What else do we have here? I don't think I have many of this one. So I'm going to skip them. Alright, so let's get some more with the blue on them. Need some more blue. Oh, I see blue. I see blue. Alright, they're textured ones. Alright, I want blue. And another blue. And now I've got to try not to get all the blues together. Move you over here, and we have more blues. And get some nice mix 
sure. I will rearrange these because um, I've got way too many blues. I mean, way too many of those tops together. So this is how easy it is. Just grabbing um, cards that go together. There you go. There's another one. Now I will rearrange these, like I said before. So this is just giving an idea of how easy it is to make these pages. I'll do one more. And then that will be it. And then I'll come back at another stage with some of these. We will build into actual pages. So let's get rid of them. Let's go down the middle of the pile. We've got more of those centers. Oh, they're so cute. Oh, there's pinks in there. I want to do them. Oh, not that way. I really like that yellow mermaid over there. I really like this one. I don't know what I've got to go with that. I'm still looking through these in case. Oh, hey. Oh, no, they're tiny little ones. If you're from Stamp Up, you'll recognise some of these. Like, <coughs> I've had these a long time. That was that planner. Went with that planner months ago. Mm. Okay. So, what do I got to go with this one? Oh, look at that. You are adorable. Oh, yes. Okay. The love hearts are textured and the sun. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like these ones. So I'm not putting these in any order. I'm just getting the right amount of cards that I need. <laughs> well, we'll be here for a long time. That's a bit brighter, isn't it? I'm not sure that actually goes with that. I've got those blue, greens, whatever it is. Turquoise colour. They're too bright. Mm, clouds, maybe. Oh, that's more the colour. They're a bit bright, actually. Going a little bit too bright. That's the right colour scheme. Maybe. Maybe it's these ones. Who remembers these? Oh my god, I love that suite we had. Stamp it up. Oh, it was just beautiful. So these are just... Not gonna match, but I'm not gonna give up. Wait, there's a yellow. That'll go. Oh, it's rounded corners. Mm. These are gonna round these corners. I mean, that's not a problem, but okay. So we need to find the rest that went with this. Oh, wait, I might have found them. See, they're all out of order. I mean, they don't all have to match, but it's easier if they do. All right, I think they're in here. Or some at the back. Here we go. Some baby line, I think. Now I'll know the greens and the yellows. Mm, not sure. That's a nice one. Wait, wrong way. Oh, oh yes, thank you. Very good. Well, that's why they get out of order. Oh my goodness. Ah. Alright, well, I only need two more. I'm not sure about the clouds. They might be too bright. What else do we have? I can see one here under there that I like. That is the right colours. Oh, these are so cute. Oh, dear. What you'll find if you do this is that you will fall in love with these cards again. Plus you'll also rediscover some that you had forgotten about. And then you go, wow, why don't I use these more often? Because they are so cute. Okay. So 
I know some people say don't mix your creams and your whites, and some people say, oh, but I don't mind if creams and whites are mixed, but I'm in the, I won't mix my creams and whites. I just, some work for me. Here we go, hello, little one. So I can get rid of that one now. See, that's cream. Oh, wait, here we go. There's one more. Oops, that's pretty. Is that those same colours? What do you know? Let me get rid of that one. And I think... Oh, look at this. Two little fingers, two little toes. <gasps> so cute! I think this range must have had whites and creams in it. Mm, 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 mm. I don't know. No, I want that one. I think it's bringing a bit more of the solid yellow that I have up there. And I'm going to drop everything in a minute because I feel like I'm in a bit of a mess here. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, be prepared to take a while because this does take a while when you're doing this sort of thing. But it just means that when you actually feel like scrapping and you have your photos printed, you'll be getting the pages done in next to no time because all this leg work's been done no I think I'm going to leave it like that that is going to be cute oh there we go there's another one sorry it's a bit of a mess this one and I will fix them up and make them a more pleasing arrangement but I hope I have given you some ideas on how to use your project life cards or your memories and more cards or whatever they're you know them as. Um, I hope I've given you some ideas on how to use them. Um, if you're like me, you buy them because they're cute and adorable and you love them and then you don't like the pocket page type of scrapping. So um, hopefully this has shown you a new way to use them all. So now I'm just going to move these out of the way, run back through the ones that we created and I've already and I had previously created so so there's a really simple Christmas one. Like, how simple is that? Three cards. There's another one. These are so cute. Alright, so another one we did today. Again, multicolored, but it doesn't matter because you're going to cover a lot of it. So don't get stuck in the, um, you know, that's a whole lot of in your face. Because by the time you add photos, a title, embellishments, you're going to cover a lot of it anyway. So there's a more muted one if the other one was a bit too in your face. <laughs> and here's the ones I made before today to show you the versatility. And again, don't get stuck on keeping things in a grid. It, like I said before, if you like doing that and you do like the pocket page style of all the little different elements, then you can do that on these pages. Um, nothing's stopping you from doing that on these pages. But also don't get stuck in thinking that you have to do it that way. You can use these as base pages and put photos and embellishments and titles wherever you like. Also, don't get stuck in that if that's got a word, a sentiment on it, and that's got sentiment on it, I have to have them show. You can cover them up. So you don't have to have them all showing. You can just use the outline. Alright, and then the last one. Alright, so I hope that's given you some ideas on using those cards that would sit otherwise on your shelf in your cupboard, um, forgotten and not getting any love. So drag them out, make some base pages, and I'll be back soon, not sure when, with a video on actually using these to create pages. And I'll also come back with some videos on how to use the other base pages, your traditional base pages, um, and how to turn them into scrap pages as well. Or finished layouts, I should say. Alright, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!